Hey guys, today's video is a review of the Comic Cruiser. I've had this board for a while and as always, I'm stoked to bring you guys a review. Stay tuned, I talk about whether this board is worth it for the money, how it performs and why myself and many other people think it's one of the best cruiser boards ever made. If you do want to buy this board, make sure you use Downhill254 at the checkout, you'll get 5% off. I also do get something in return, so if you do also want to support me, please do use Downhill254. And though I do make some money, if you do end up buying this board, that will not in any way affect my review. I'll be unbiased and critical where I need to be. Let's kick it off with the specifications of this board first. So lengthwise it's 33 inches long. When it comes to the width it's 7.87 inches long at the widest and it tapers quite a bit. When it comes to the wheelbase it has a wheelbase of about 20 inches. The construction of this board is quite interesting. It's made with vertically laminated basswood with three layers of sapel mahogany stringers in the middle. It's also sandwiched between two layers of fiberglass, one on the top, one on the bottom. And this layering of fiberglass also kind of makes the board a little bit waterproof so it can withstand some weather and stuff. The board also does have quite a bit of flex, but it is strong enough to hold up riders weighing over 200 pounds. The concave and shape of this board is kind of unique. So it has a considerable amount of rocker and when you stand on it and the board flexes, that rocker becomes even more. So it rides really low to the ground. It also has a little bit of convex or camber as opposed to concave where the middle of the board is raised up more than the sides of the board so you have this really comfortable sort of convex shape that is very comfortable to stand on and in terms of the board's shape it's a single kick top mount and at the back you do have a kick tail and the kick tail comes paired with a skid plate to ensure durability and that it doesn't wear down very quickly and yes you can replace this skid plate over time now let's talk about the trucks. So you have Paris traditional kingpin trucks on this complete. In the front you have the front truck wedged plus 7 degrees by these soft Kiro risers and in the back you have the back truck de-wedged 7 degrees. For bushings in the back you have ATA super high rebound bushings from Venom, both cones top and bottom with a cupped washer on the roadside bushing and no washer on the boardside bushing. In the front you have 83A really soft super high rebound Venom bushings with a cupped washer on the top or rather roadside and no washer board side. Finally, let's look at what else is under the board. So I did mention you do get soft Kiro risers. Now these are very soft and squishy. For wheels, you have 69 millimeter tall Paul Peralta snakes. For bearings, you have zealous bearings. And for grip tape as well, you have just up grip tape. All this comes together at the price of $235 or $223 if you use downhill 254 at the checkout. And as always, again, there is a write-up that accompanies this video. If you want a more in-depth and detailed approach to this review, please do check out the write-up. I've also had a small interview with Comet, and if you want to learn things about why they decided to design the board or different small interesting things, do check it out. So let's kick this review off with a bit of a summary. The Comet Cruiser is one of the best cruiser boards I have ever skated. Now, this is not to say that it's the best at one specific thing, whether that's pushing, sliding, doing tricks, whatever. No. It does a lot of things really well and it puts them together in this package that's really fun and intuitive to skate. In fact, another title I'd like to give it is it being one of the funnest boards that I've ever had the pleasure of skating. When I'm going out to skate or if I'm going to run an errand, I find myself reaching for this board more so than other boards in my quiver. One negative thing I could say about this board is how long it takes for it to end up in your hands. From purchasing it, it could take anywhere from three to four months for it to end up in your hands. But other than that, I don't think there's anything else that is bad about this board to be honest one thing i also want to point out is that this board feels best when it's moving when you're at a standstill the board feels very floppy and it feels like it has no center point like it just wants to tip side to side that does not present you with an accurate reflection of how this board actually rides you actually do have to take it to let's say 5 10 miles per hour in order for you to get a good feel for it so yeah, it feels best when it's moving and when it does move it's surprisingly stable too so yeah, the Comet Cruiser is surprisingly stable. I've taken it up to speeds of about 25 miles per hour and it's been solid with no hint of twitch or wobbles. That being said, don't attempt the same. I have my very experienced downhill skateboarder, so I'm used to speeds of 25 miles per hour and above. But yeah, the reason it's so stable is because of the wedging and de-wedging. For the uninitiated, what wedging does is it increases the truck angle and what de-wedging does it is decreases the truck angle as well. And a higher truck angle means a truck that turns more and leans less. And a lower truck angle means a truck that leans more and turns less. And what you end up having is kind of like a board that turns kind of like a car with the back 
not doing too much turning and the front doing a lot of turning and what that means is you just have a stable ride and what this really translates to is a lot of confidence when you're skating it when you're skating it at a considerable speed of let's say 12 miles per hour 50 miles per hour you know you feel very confident that the body isn't going to wobble out on you what it also means is better control and better stability when you're turning and you can confidently weave in and out of obstacles without worry so what you end up having is a very nimble but confidence inspiring board that you can sort of kind of weave and slalom between as objects as you desire as confidently it's very fun and because the front truck is wedged you end up with a very tiny front truck and this just means that this board turns on a dime and not to worry as well because you have a very stable back end that's not gonna suddenly twitch or wobble on you as you're taking those tight aggressive turns and yeah you just basically go where you want on the road you know it just turns you see a object you're on a slalom between you just go for it the only thing you are limited by is the grip of your wheels but these pile snakes are very forgiving when you get to that edge of traction they don't suddenly jut or uh, go into the slide aggressively they sort of gently scrub out and this sort of gives you the feedback that you need to know that hey man maybe you're doing too much and you should cool it on the aggressive turning but yeah this board turns on a dime and yeah there's no line you can't take and another cool thing about the turning is that this board turns really really deeply like you can lean as much as you want and you can get as all the turning you want from this board and the cool thing as well because of the risers and the wheel wells you don't get any wheel bite so you can turn as deeply as you want and not worry about wheel bite which is really really cool you can sort of exceed the maximum lean and turn of these trucks which is something you can't do on most top mount boards and another thing because it turns so deeply and because there's no wheel bite you can sort of turn as hard as you can and turn aggressively and this naturally slows you down this is the first board in my opinion where carve to slow down is a viable strategy like when you do downhill or when you're skating down a hill you hear people tell you to carve some speed out but a lot of the time that really doesn't do that much it doesn't really do nothing um, but on this board it is actually helpful because you can turn really deeply like if you're not going too fast you can sort of turn deep enough that you kind of slightly come back uphill and you sort of get the wheels to scrub out and those two things naturally slow you down more so yeah this is the first board that carve to slow down is actually a possibility hey maybe if you have a surf skate curve to slow down is also a possibility but yeah another thing i want to touch on is how smooth and controllable the turning is earlier i did mention that this board feels best when you're moving and when you're standing still it kind of feels tippy like it has no center point but surprisingly when you are skating you do get really smooth control turning and i don't really know why that is but this board does exactly as you tell it to do i had no issues with control and yeah i do also think the fact that high quality aftermarket bushings have been used does aid in the smooth and controlledness of the turn this board also rides surprisingly low to the ground it has a lot of rocker and has quite a bit of flex so when you are skating you are just a few inches off the ground no much and what this means is that this deck is easier to push and it's also easier to foot brake and that lowness to the ground also sort of lowers your center of gravity and makes the overall ride more stable so yeah another thing i was really surprised by is how lightweight this deck is and i think it's lightweight because of the vertically laminated deck usually horizontally laminated decks of this size are quite heavy but yeah this deck is quite lightweight and what that translates to is when you're pushing it accelerates very easily it's easy to get going from a stop when you're carrying it around it's all it's quite lightweight it's really easy to carry it on your hands and your arms don't get tired out very quickly finally in theory it should also be easier to ollie because of how light it is and yeah i guess it is it is a bit difficult to ollie and more on this later but yeah the lightweightness is quite nice another thing that surprised me is how well this board handles rough surfaces and road imperfections like this board does really well over like pebbles over like rough patches in the road over cracks like it really absorbs them and feathers out the feel i was really really surprised by this and i think the reason being is the soft 75a snakes the flex of this board and the soft risers as well all these things work together to dampen the harshness of road vibrations and just really give you a comfortable ride and what that translates to is yeah a comfortable ride plus you're able to ride this board for longer without really your feet getting uncomfortable or you know getting cramps because of the roughness of road vibrations and yeah you can also ride different surfaces more comfortably too yeah and you also don't have to rely on getting really big wheels you know just to feel comfortable like skating in a city environment or whatever
next let's talk about how this thing slides this thing slides really really well it's not the best board for sliding out there but it does do a good job of it and another thing that impressed me is the pearl snakes pearl snakes are easily the best longboarding slide wheel out there they slide like a dream when they get to that edge of traction they break into the slide very smoothly and they make this satisfying hissing sound that i pray if you do get this board that you do get to experience that sound it's pretty satisfying not gonna lie but yeah all together this board slides really really well and that's thanks to the pearl snakes and if you just turn deeply enough you can sort of get them to scrub out and scrubbing out means you've exceeded the limits of traction of the wheel and they do start sliding so yeah if you can't turn deeply enough you can't get these things to break traction that being said i did have a bit of an issue holding out really long slides on this board and more on that later some tips or some things that i did to make sliding the cruiser feel easier now with this board it felt more like i had to push the wheels out into the slide sort of really dig into them and push my feet into it and my weight into it rather than just sort of kicking out the board and floating on top of it no i had really for example for two sides really push and put my weight into my toes to get the board to slide and hold out the slide and the same for heels and yeah you know really sort of dig in as opposed to you know getting to that limit of traction and then kicking out so yeah just keep that in mind you kind of have to sit on those sort of pressure points you know if you're doing heel sides if you're doing toe sides and really dig in and push and that really gave me the best results and i was able to do like fairly decent stand-up slides i was quite surprised this isn't a free ride board but I was doing like maybe five, 10 foot slides, maybe 15 foot sometimes. Next thing I wanna talk about is the kick. The kick tail on this board is quite usable. You can use it to get down curbs and get up curbs. You can also use it to ollie, but I found ollieing this deck to feel a little bit weird, not gonna lie, uh, it feels a little bit strange, but you can ollie it. I did get used to it and yeah, I do think what threw me off is just how long this board is. If you have never ollied before and, want, and are wondering if you can ollie on this board, I do think you can learn to ollie on it. And yeah, but it will be different from a popsicle board and as always i will recommend a proper popsicle board if learning to do tricks and oiling is what you have in mind let's briefly talk about the quality components that come with the cruiser now all the components on this board are really high quality if you check out the specification section yeah you know what they are but they are really high quality and are some of the best venom bushings are the go-to for anyone looking to pick up bushings or stuff like that Pearl snake, some of the best in the business. Pirate trucks, some of the best as well. And yeah, getting high quality components. And another thing is the Comic Cruiser works perfectly out the box. As soon as you get this board, you can ride it without having to adjust a thing and absolutely enjoy it. And you could also ride it for months and months and probably even years without ever having to replace any components. Maybe the bearings, if they do get rusted out from you riding in the mud or riding over a puddle or riding in the rain, whatever it is, or maybe replacing the skid plate. But yeah, it works great out the box and you don't have to replace or adjust anything. I do know some people might feel a little bit confident from tightening the trucks, but I don't recommend you do that. I recommend you get used to the board as it's made to ride perfectly just outside the box. Just out the box, just outside the box just out the box okay i'm going to include a price breakdown of all the components individually and the deck as well now i had to estimate the price of the deck but everything adds up to about 300 or 312 dollars or around that sort of so the 235 dollars that you're paying is very reasonable and you're getting great value for your money so as i did mention earlier this board is a jack of all trades but must of none sort of thing and this next section i'm just demonstrating to you what this board is very good at but not the best at and if you're wanting to buy this board specifically for that reason it might not be the best option so the first thing is just pushing around i don't mean just pushing around i mean like long distance stuff like if you have to skate 10 kilometers 10 miles etc now i have skated 10 miles on this board and felt very okay you know felt comfortable felt not that tired but there are better tools out there for the job for example if i wanted to skate a long distance sort of thing like 15 miles i wouldn't pick this board i'd pick something that sits lower to the ground has bigger wheels for example the land yards drop cut or if you want something more long distance focused the pantheon ember pantheon nexus and there are a bunch of other boards out there so yeah whereas this board is great for pushing and it'll be excellent for like your city runs for your errands maybe you have to commute a short distance if you do want to travel a significant distance there are better tools out there for the job but that being said it does a pretty damn good job of it the next thing that it's pretty good at but not the best at is sliding this board slides like a dream it breaks into the slide very smoothly and is very easy to kick out that being said if you do want to 
progressively are sliding and you know be able to go 30 miles per hour down the hill and do a common slide or a pre-drift into a corner this board isn't necessarily the one for it if you just want to goof off maybe even learn some slides and just have a good time this is a great option but if you do want to seriously learn how to slide and progress as a downhill skater then this isn't the board for you that being said as i did say if you do just want to learn to slide and goof off and you know have fun with that then this board will get the job done Lastly, something that it's good at but not great at is ollieing and do, doing tricks. So you can't ollie this board, you probably can't do some tricks, you can probably like do some pop shoves and stuff like that, but it's not the best for doing tricks. If you seriously want to learn how to do tricks, then I recommend picking up a proper popsicle board. However, if you just want to throw an ollie here or there or throw a trick here or there, then this board is more than capable of doing that. Next, I'm looking at things I didn't like about the Comet Cruiser. One thing I didn't really like was how long it took to get in my hands. Like I did say, it does take anywhere from three to four months. So yeah, it does take a while. And that's the one thing that I don't really like. So the other thing that I didn't like about this board is how the graphics on the snakes would rub off on your hands when you'd carry it like this. Now, this isn't something that would affect performance, but if you want to keep the graphics on your snakes, you might have to sort of flip them around, keep them like that. But the graphics on these wheels do come off and yeah but it doesn't affect performance and you know it's not really something to think about but it's just something i think i should point out to you guys as you can see at the back the graphic is still kind of fresh it's not as worn because i don't grab the back like this and it doesn't have the opportunity to rub off in my hands next up i have some questions from some instagram users the first is is this thing comfortable for skating long distances i'd say yes for distances less than 10 kilometers this thing can get the job done and if you're up for the challenge you can even do distances slightly longer than 10 kilometers the next question is can you learn tricks on this i'd say yeah you can comfortably learn to ollie on this and maybe even one trick or two to learn to pop shove maybe a boneless or something like that but it is limited if you do want to learn tricks properly i always recommend picking up a proper popsicle board rather than using a cruiser or a hybrid board next question is is the comic cruiser the ultimate quiver killer my answer is no not really it does a lot of things really well and i'd say it's a pretty pretty good quiver killer but not the ultimate quiver killer i will always reach for niche specific boards if i want to get the job done properly but yeah it does do a good job of that being a sort of good to great quiver killer next question is is the comic cruiser good in city environments and the answer to that is yes here's why it does a very good job of feathering out road vibration and road imperfections it's very comfortable to skate you can skate over pebbles cracks surface roughness with no issue whatsoever it does have a kicktail so you can't get down and up cubs fairly easily it is lightweight so when you do need to carry it it's very easy to carry around and doesn't tie your arm out at all but i think the most important feature is how turny it is and how quick it is to turn you can weave and slalom between obstacles and people and really sort of continue your ride uninterrupted and if you're skating on the pavement this sort of feature is clutch you can weave between people weave between signs weave between road imperfections and just basically keep riding a big issue for me with city riding where there's a lot of traffic a lot of people is sometimes you have to stop riding because you know you basically have no path but because of how turny this is you can sort of open up a path or find a path or find like a find room or whatever it is and you basically have more options so yeah the comic cruiser is great for skating in the city next question is is the comic cruiser good for beginners answer to that is yes but beginners should also keep in mind that like i did say this board doesn't feel very nice when you're standing still you do have to ride it and there is going to have to be a small sort of leap of faith but when you do ride this board when it does get moving it does feel incredible it does feel amazing and you're going to have a great time next question asked me would i change anything about the comic cruiser and no my initial answer to this was i do something to make the kick to have a bit more pop so it was easier to sort of ollie the board but since then i've gotten a bit more used to the board and can sort of kick it up more consistently and ollies feel a lot more natural on it for me so no i don't think there's anything i would change the next question is is the comic cruiser good for learning slides and i'll say Yes, it is, but as always, there are better tools out there to get the job done. And here's why I say the better tools. The Comet Cruiser doesn't come with coarse grip tape, it comes with fine grip tape. So when you are sliding it, there is a chance your feet can slide off. And also a very narrow platform, and that's not necessarily very comfortable for learning to slide. But yes, you can learn to slide on it. Pulse snakes slide very easily. This board breaks into the slide in a very smooth and controlled way, and you can get to grips with it. Again, I just want to reiterate, if you do want to goof off, just learn to slide, just have a bit of fun. Yes, Comet Cruiser, excellent. But if you do want to get more serious with like sliding and going fast and going downhill, then I will always suggest that you pick up a proper board built for downhill skateboarding and built for sliding. 
Another question is, can you pump the cruiser? Answer that question is, yes, you can pump the Comet Cruiser because of how nimble it is in the front and because of how locked in the back truck is, you can sort of gain speed from pumping and you can pump from sort of a standing still position and get the board moving to a considerable pace. I push faster than I can pump, but when I am tired, I do pump a little bit and yeah, it is really fun to pump this board and can pump up to considerable speed. The last question is, is the Comet Cruiser a good gift? My answer to that is yes it is absolutely a great gift if you buy this for a skateboarder you know someone who skates in the park who just wants a cruiser to cruise around they are gonna love this thing this is the best cruiser ever even if you get this for okay whoever you get this for they're gonna love it you have my guarantee and if you, they don't love it just like sock them in the face sit down in 254 told you to do that no don't do that but yeah it would make a great gift thanks to everyone watching this video thank you to everyone who subscribed so far big thanks to comet for sending this board and giving me things at a discounted rate so that i could bring this review to you guys big thanks to all my patrons and yeah if you enjoyed this review give it a like um i don't know you do what you want bro <laughs> but yeah hope it was informative and if there's anything you want to add any other questions anything i missed out feel free to comment and let me know you guys take care